across the tropical Atlantic as we wrap up the month of August. We do have an area out here with a moderate risk of development, which is no surprise for this time of year. But one thing that is hindering it is a little bit of dry air. We have Saharan dust just towards it to north that is kind of subduing it. But if we look ahead into next week, as this moves further towards the west, you can see these areas in brown that you have just towards the north kind of go away and it moves into an area more favorable for development and even looking well ahead into the end of next week into next weekend. Some of the guidance is picking up on a tropical development around Cuba. Still long range, still plenty of time to monitor this, but definitely given the fact that it's going to be moving away from that dry air, reduced in shear and very warm sea surface temperatures, there is that chance of tropical cyclone development. Also, don't forget as we go ahead through the start of September, we are nearing the peak of hurricane season. Typically, we have a storm out there this time of year. That is that September 10th is the peak, but even looking at the end of August, Katrina made landfall 19 years ago today. Ida three years ago and even Adalio just one year ago along the Big Bend area of Florida. So of course, plenty to talk about not only in the Atlantic, but even looking across the globe. We have several storm systems out in the Pacific Ocean impacting Hawaii, even our friends on the other side of the world in the Eastern Hemisphere with a typhoon. Of course, if we have any storms near the first coast, we'll keep you posted right here at First Coast News with the latest information. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetter.